This September China unveiled a range of advanced new weapons for its World War II victory parade including new nuclear missiles, robotic mini-submarines, and a loudly rumbling diesel engine tank. But also making a discreet entrance was a set of four new hybrid electric Type 100 tanks ZTZ-100, which quietly hummed along, followed by four similarly powered ZBD-100 armored vehicles designed to support the tanks with drones, infantry and radar. If China attempts an amphibious invasion of Taiwan or other disputed islands, or escalates border clashes with India in the Himalayas, these armored vehicles may be at the forefront, as they're easier to transport to combat zones than their predecessors and designed around a concept of informatization where having better drones, sensors and networks matters more than heavier armor and bigger guns. Key features include a robotic gun turret, X-ray vision goggles for the crew, over a dozen infrared-slash-optical sensors and radars, and automated systems that kill drones and missiles before they can strike the tank. First spotted undergoing tests in 2024, the roughly 40-ton Type 100s weigh less than China's main battle tanks, yet are packed full of advanced capabilities. The Type 100 follows the general trend for futuristic tank design in nearly all aspects, including being lighter and having a fully robotic gun turret, and Active Protection Systems APS, which can detect and destroy incoming missiles and drones. A hybrid diesel-electric drive powers all of it. China may have stolen first place over the US and Russia in their attempts to create a next generation of armored fighting vehicles. Over a decade earlier, Russia splashly paraded its avant-garde T-14 Armada tank featuring APS and an unmanned turret. However, Moscow remains unwilling or unable to deploy T-14 into combat in Ukraine years later. Meanwhile, the US Army will soon unveil its improved M1E3 Abrams main battle tank, which also features hybrid electric propulsion, APS, and weight reductions. The Type 100 unmanned turrets with autoloading guns save weight by reducing armored surface areas. Without human occupants, they may be only lightly armored to concentrate protection for the crew sealed off in the hull, where they're also protected against ammunition explosions in the turret. However, tank crews still need to see what's happening around them, so the Type 100 sports at least 13 distributed optical and laser sensors that together provide 360-degree coverage. Sensor data is then fused with that from friendly vehicles and drones to inform the crew's augmented reality goggles. These overlay key information, like positions of friends and enemies and allow a kind of X-ray vision through the hull. The Type 100 tank will also have ZBD-100 fire support vehicles accompanying them. These smaller armored fighting vehicles have scaled down 30 to 40 mm autocannon turrets and share a similar hybrid diesel-electric powertrain. Intended to support ZTZ-100, these novel vehicles use retractable active electronically scanned array radars, externally carried reconnaissance drones, and four to six smaller kamikaze drones that launch from vertical launch cells. They can transport three to four infantry in a rear hull compartment. The ZBD-100 drones could help tank crews anticipate danger. They can acquire targets for indirect fire attacks, provide early warning of approaching threats, and avoid the tanks blundering into ambushes and minefields. The hybrid diesel-electric propulsion itself offers multiple advantages. It helps keep electrical systems online without running the motor when the tank needs to remain stationary in defensive or ambush positions. It also enables mobility even after an engine casualty. Quiet batteries only driving may also offer a stealth advantage in some scenarios, historically, tank attacks and ambushes at night or in dense terrain were often overheard before being seen. The Type 100 GL6 Hard Kill APS employs four advanced ESA radars covering 90-degree arcs, plus a fifth looking upward, providing a full hemisphere of defensive scanning to look for incoming threats. Once an attack is detected, the system alerts the crew and automatically readies two turret-top launchers to discharge a precisely timed countershot. A Type 100 has four rounds per launcher, a ZBD-100 has two. The Type 100 also boasts laser and radar warning systems. Reportedly, soft-kill countermeasures including automatically discharged smoke grenades and a JD-4 laser that blinds optically guided missiles. The tank also sports an additional remote-control heavy machine gun turret with integral sensors possibly usable as a backup hard-kill APS. 
Its 105mm gun can generate enough barrel pressure to shoot a kinetic armor-piercing shell at speeds of at 1,706 meters per second, that's roughly equivalent to what an Abrams can achieve with its 120mm gun. Chinese commentators also say the ZTZ-100 will have the advantage of being able to locate and attack enemies without entering enemy line of sight, using sensors networked with drones and other vehicles. However, executing that sophisticated operational concept could prove challenging. For example, China's existing GP-105 laser beam riding gun-launched missile isn't designed for indirect fire. It will still take a lot of learning and acquiring experience to incorporate this into doctrine and tactics. Reliance on APS and sensors also has risks, as current APS have limited ability to counter kinetic energy tank shells. But the Type 100 design likely reflects decreased emphasis on tank versus tank combat, as fighting in Ukraine shows, drones, mines, artillery and missiles account for the vast majority of tank losses. The Type 100 instead echoes longtime Chinese interest in light tanks like the Type 15, deployable to challenging terrain including mountains, rice paddies, and subtropical forests. Lighter tanks consume less fuel and are easier to keep under bridge weight limits, traverse through muddy terrain, recover when bogged down, transport by air, or land on a beachhead. Rumors allege that the vehicles paraded this September may not be the endpoint of China's armor R&D program. Additional Type 100 variants are supposedly under development, including a reconnaissance support vehicle and heavier main battle tank. If the Type 100 vehicle family proves more mature than Russia's T-14 a decade ago, China might win the race to field a new generation of diverse armored vehicles. These new vehicles can team up and share an unprecedented amount of information, potentially making them ideal to wage war in a drone-saturated battlefield.